Hey everybody, welcome to Charlie and Eric. I am Eric Hyman, and I am very, very, very excited to let you know that I am in the kitchen of the wonderful Tim Bagley. I'm just moving this so I can see all of you. Hey Leo, hey Enzo, hey Dad, hey Jimmy. Chat wasn't working, but the social stream seems to be. Thanks for watching, you guys. Thanks, Adam. Uh, so I'm here with Tim, Tim Bagley. <laughs> and he is going to show us a recipe that he learned from Zelda Rubenstein. You may remember him from such Zelda, a role. Zelda, you, Zelda. Zelda Rubenstein. From, from uh, Poltergeist. From Poltergeist mm -hmm. and Teen Witch, mm -hmm. which is right. one of my favorite movies. I have it on DVD. You do? I do. Did you know you can get that on DVD? No, I didn't know that. Well, now you're going to have to get it because it's awesome. Uh, I first saw you in... I have to say Will and Grace, and then you were in Monk, mm -hmm. and you were in Knocked Up, which was an yes. awesome, awesome movie, and you're going to be in another Jet Avatar yes. movie called This Is 40. This Is 40, yeah. That's exciting. I think he's editing it now. Is he really? With mm -hmm. Paul Rudd and you, and Leslie, Leslie Mann. Mann. I love her. She's mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, so, this recipe was taught to you by Zelda, and tell me a little bit about it. Well, the thing about Zelda is, Zelda, when I first moved to Los Angeles, yeah. the very first acting class that I took was with a man named Gordon Hunt, and Zelda was in that class, uh -huh. and uh, Zelda was, it was right around, oh, also Gordon's daughter was in the class, Helen Hunt, um, uh, and it was yeah. like a, a small class, like eight people, yeah. Paul, Regina, it was a really, you know, good little group, and, um, and Zelda had finished filming Poltergeist. And so it came out while I was in class with her. Oh, wow. And so she was the first person that I kind of saw go from, you know, just being a regular person to suddenly, you know, she was Fans. Yeah. working as an actress. And, you know, she got notoriety from, from Poltergeist. She was a little person who played the medium in Poltergeist. And, um, and so we were doing a scene in acting class. This is a long time ago. Yeah. And and it was from Tea and Sympathy, and she um, she was asking me, like, what I eat and everything, and, and I just ate, you know, like, hamburger helper. And, <laughs> yeah. like and so she told me, you need to know a few basic things. You need to know how to roast a chicken, and you need to know how to make chicken soup. Uh, and so, um, you know, she, I went over there, and she showed me how to do those things. So that's, that's what awesome. I want to do for you guys, because cool. it's one of those things, like, even if you're poor... You can make a, chi a roasted chicken yeah. very cheaply, and then use all the and then use all the things, and then have soup and eat off of that soup for a week. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. People are saying Zelda was amazing, such an awesome woman and actress. Yeah. I'm cooking some awesome beef fried rice while watching. That's awesome, Jimmy. Loved you and Will and Grace. Love that you were doing this. Me too. Um, so all right, let's get to let's get to cooking. So what's the first thing you're gonna do? So the first thing, just here's a chicken. I put it on. <laughs> I put it on. What are these things called? Do you know what this is? It's like a, it's a, a broiler pan. A broiler pan. Yeah. Right? And the whole the point is, is to let the juices go because if you if you you um, roast the chicken first okay. before you make the soup. Yeah. Because um, otherwise you end up with a whole lot of schmaltz on the top of it. <laughs> schmaltz. Mm -hmm. And so, Jewish chicken fat. That's right. And so, um, and even with this, even if you do this yeah. and the juices go into the drain, you still end up with some, but it's just a little bit, and and that won't hurt anybody. Okay, good. Um, so this is very healthy. So it's, it's it's healthy. And then and then I'm just gonna start with things. So there's garlic. Okay. And I, and I chop it up like this. All right. And then I put it. I just kind of put it on in little clumps. And sometimes she would put it like big inside, pot of it yeah. inside. Um, and then um, culture salt. Okay. So I put a little bit of that on. <laughs> That's a small. Is that a technical term? <laughs> it is. <laughs> it actually is. Um, it is in the Jewish community. It is. Um, and then um, this is just uh, pepper. Okay. But and so I put some of that in. And then this is something else. <laughs> <laughs> this is a little trick. It's Lowry seasoned salt, 
and pepper. So Larry seasoned salt and pepper, and Zelda used to use this, and she would put it on a lot. Like, like she would just like dump so much onto so it. So much on. She wasn't sparing. No, it. it's like this. If you put a lot on, okay, and it's very flavorful and good. Uh, a little bit of garlic salt. Wait, can I grab this one quick? Yeah, can show them. Yeah. He has his own line of Lowry's season salt. Okay. Now that happens. <laughs> I'm Actually, gonna, it's a VIP Lowry's salt. I'm going to give you a little trick. This is a good thing for okay. people that are watching. In, if you go to Lowry's in Los Angeles, and if you say, the lady, one time she said to me, uh, she said, would you like to become a VIP member? And I said, what does that entail? And she yeah. said, just let us know your wife's name, your children's names and your anniversary, and you'll get a bottle of wine, you know, and, and um, you know, season salt sent on those, you know, those birthday, yeah. So I made up the name of a wife, <laughs> yeah. Maria Bagley, and then five children. Uh -huh. And so um, six times a year, seven times a year, including my own, yeah. I get spices. And then for the fake anniversary, I get a bottle of wine. That's awesome. And and you get discounts and coupons. There's no, it's a win-win being a VIP member at Lowry's. And they put your name on that. And you get your name I on it. I think that means more to me than anything. But it's always hard to have to explain when it says, um, one of the things says Petrel Bagley. Like I named all the <laughs> imaginary kids. You're like, they don't live here. They yeah, don't right. live here. It's all imaginary. <laughs> okay, so, um, so I put out a little garlic salt. Okay. Uh, this is a little bit of um, poultry seasoning. Okay. And I put some of that on. They have poultry seasoning. And then this is the big thing that was, you know, that she, that she said was a must. Okay. This is tarragon. Yeah. And you just um, take it. You know, you just oh, like that. Yeah. You that. just rub it in like that oh, okay. over it. And um, and 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 she never used spices sparingly. <laughs> you know, so you just kind of just throw yeah, it on there. you just throw it on, and then um, you take this. Uh -huh. That's it. I mean, that's really you just you just kind of angle season it, it with that, and you can obviously season it in any way that you want. But yeah. um, that's you know that's kind of what what she did, and then put it in there, and the, what what happens is the the juice is kind of seep out so the outside the skin becomes crispy. Oh cool. And then the inside stays really good and moist. Oh that's and, and then you cook it slow. I'm uh, cooking it at three fifty. For like you how know, long? for like I usually cook it for like two, three hours. Oh okay. Sometimes if I've got a whole day you yeah. know that I can do it, I'll I'll cook it at like uh, two hundred and fifty oh, uh, like four hour. hours. Yeah. Oh that's good. Mm hmm so um, you're not drying it out or anything? No, like it doesn't dry. It. The skin gets dry and crispy, yeah. but the, um, but the, um, but the inside, the inside, because you're going to end up cooking that again. Yeah, and then how it ends up kind of looking is like this. All right? Do you see? Oh, the other thing. And that smells awesome, by the way. The other thing that she told me is when you're washing it, when you're preparing yeah. the thing, to make sure that you wash it all really good. Do you dry it's it? The inside. Mm -mm. You don't dry, I don't dry it. it. I, okay. I don't mind if it's wet because you can use that wetness to make all the spices stick. Ah, uh, okay. All right. So this is what it looks like where it's kind of crispy and dry. Yeah. And then should we go on to the next one? Yeah. Maybe? So we're, I'm just going to read some comments. Praying to the poultry. I don't know what that means, Leo, but that's Praying awesome. to the poultry. That means that he really likes the poultry. He oh, the poultry. okay. He worships the poultry He's a little bit. Well, when it looks like that, I wish a poultry okay. too. Uh, I need to be a VIP. Somebody said, oh, Tara in Pittsburgh says, haha, I need to be a VIP member there, meaning Lowry. <laughs> don't tell I me. Think I'm like, don't tell don't anybody. tell them the little trick. Yeah. But it, it's a, it's a, you know, if they ask you to, if they, if the waitress asks you something like that, always ask because, you know, free stuff will never hurt anybody. No. And Zelda would like that one. Yes, she would love she that. She would. Mazel tov. My dad even said, Schmaltz is the lifeblood of the Eastern European Jewish world. <laughs> it gives you heartburn to keep you warm. <laughs> That's my father right there. That's I love it. Somebody said, LOL, Jeffrey. Thanks, Jeffrey. Chris. That's my dad's name. Oh, cool. Jeffrey Hyman. We have a lovely last name out loud. I was talking about that last night in my L.A. show at, on, uh, at Room 5 on La Brea. Uh, we had this whole big discussion about my last name and how awful it was. It was to be in seventh grade and find out what that 
what that is. I know somebody else I, named Hyman spelled H-Y-M-A-N. My family, actually, my dad's watching this, so he can tell you, all of our family is H-Y-M-A-N. My grandfather was one of eight brothers and sisters, and they were poor in Manhattan, like in the 20s. And for some reason, um, two of the siblings, when they had their birth certificates, had mistakes on them. But I guess they were dead, they were too poor. They were too poor to, um, like I'm talking to him, like he's going to answer back. Like they were too poor to have a change. So my aunts and uncles, and my great aunts and uncles are all H Y M A N. But me, my dad, and my sister, and my grand my grandma and my grandpa, we're all H I. So we're like this weird kind of black sheep of the family. I understand that. But I don't know why it not never got changed, but because it didn't, our, it's funny to have all our relatives with a, it almost looks like a completely mm -hmm. different name. I have a friend my friend that were, his name was always Larry Hyman. H-Y-M-A-N, and then he went to Israel, and he came back, and he changed his name to Yehuda Hanun. Yehuda Hanun. Um, I might change my name to that. <laughs> and then, um, and then uh, also, my family is Irish, and they're, uh, my original, when they came over here from Ireland, it yeah. was, was O'Begley, O, and then B-E-G-L-E-Y, oh. and then because there were signs everywhere saying do not hire the Irish, you know, Irish oh, really? do not apply. Oh, yeah, there was like a real prejudice against Irish, especially in New York, in, you know, in, when mine came over here. So they dropped the O and changed the E to A. So I come from a long line of sheen. <laughs> That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's so funny because I don't think, it's so interesting to hear people changing their names like on purpose, because I feel like I'm in a time and era where, for myself, I'm kind of, that's my name, uh, whether I like it or not, that's my name. Yeah. I don't, I just kind of took it, and I've never, well, especially being in the entertainment business, for me, there was always somebody, like some agent, or some manager in cash, you remember this? There was somebody who was like, oh, what's your middle name? And my middle name's Jay, and somebody would be like, you should be oh, I hate that. Jay. Because they they were thinking you're not you're not marketable with your name as it is, and I'm a big fan of Ani DeFranco and like Bob Dylan, like just people that their like their birth certificates are exactly yeah. what their CDs are. Yeah. You know, like there's no difference, and I I always felt like anything I pick just would sound it wouldn't be me. Well, it was also a different time. I mean, yeah. I think that some people felt they had to do that back then. You know, it's, we're living in a world now where you don't really have to do oh, that. Oh, because ethnicity meant more back then. I yeah. That you didn't, like you're saying with your last name, like you might not have been able to get work, so you would do well, what you have to do to get work. They, for them, yeah, yeah, for them, when they came to town, they were like, you know, they didn't want to be like Obegley. It sounded too Irish. Yeah. And so, and so they thought, you know, let's soften it and make it sound English. And yeah. Then, you know, and I, I think musicians do that too. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't know. Uh, you know, that's interesting. Actors do that all the time. You know, I, I, I know, especially in the older. Uh, so they did John Mellencamp. Is that he must be one? Of, he's one of those people that has changed his name. He has. He has. I, th I guess he has. Leo has he? They have said that somebody where they changed their name in order to, I guess. I, I so many people in music have done that. Well, Share people. Yeah, you know, people do things to try to uh, be more appealing. Yeah. yeah. I think there's always some kind of a logic behind it. I have I have a friend who is an actor yeah. and his name was his name was Patrick McCollum and he's black. Yeah. And McCollum sounded Irish. Yeah. Which it was. His father was Irish. But so he changed it to Scotch Ellis Laurie, which oh, wow. sounds very Jewish. Yeah. <laughs> and so you know but you know, I think that, that people make you know, they make their decisions. And then they get their opportunities based on it. Yeah. You know what's fun? Chicken soup. That's oh, yeah, fun. that's right. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, uh, this is not my kitchen. This is Tim's kitchen. That's beautiful. You're getting a lot of compliments on the nice stainless steel. Oh, that's nice. Give us a kitchen tour. Yes, he started as John Cougar. Oh, and then he, like, is John, John Cougar. Cougar. And he changed his name to John Mellencamp. And then I he like changed John it to Cougar. John Cougar Mellencamp. Okay. That's interesting, Jimmy. Uh, they want a tour? Here, show them this. Show them that. Okay, wait. About that. You guys serve at this? This sign, Kern oh, it turns out really well. 
Colonel Lickens. Okay, I did an episode of Pushing Daisies, and I played like a, a, a Colonel Sanders type of character. Yeah. And when the show was canceled, the producer called me and said, hey, I've got this sign in my garage. Would you want it? And I said, sure. And I went over and picked it up, and it was all, at the time, it was all a big, long sign. Oh, okay. And, um, like, it was all one piece, and it was really long. And so I had to cut it in half in order to have it oh, in my stash it, yeah. Because the only other place that it would fit in my house was over the bed, in the bedroom. And I got to take on a licking in my bedroom. So I felt like it was definitely for the kitchen. And, uh, That's anyway, awesome. And then in order to have a neon sign in your house, you have to have all these things installed. Uh, and so it ended up costing me like $1,500 to have all oh this stuff God. installed. So it's the gift, the free gift that keeps on taking. <laughs> the free gift that keeps on taking. Okay, it's so cool. I think it sets your kitchen apart from other kitchens. <laughs> yeah. I don't think Martha Stewart has a Colonel Licking sign, but you do. And then, uh, and then, Pushing uh, Daisies was an awesome show. Love Jeff on it. Yeah, Jeff was great. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I actually met somebody, I was telling somebody about you, and they're like, oh, you mean the guy from Pushing Daisies? Really? And they said you died in the beginning of that. I did. <laughs> I, I, I was, bo- I was playing like a Colonel Sanders character. Yeah. I was boiled, um, I was like, you know, um, oh, boiled I like in, like, oil chicken. like chicken. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, okay, are we ready to go? I love Pushing Daisies. Day? Yes. Okay, so we got we got some time left. We play? We do. We have like just about 15 oh, minutes. For for the whole thing? Yeah. So I better get going on this chicken soup. Uh, I think you've already done a wonderful job of laying out all the ingredients. Okay, so I'm going to tell... Oh, wait. First, we're going to put the chicken in here. Well, let me just... Okay, so this is how this would work. All right? We're not going to do the whole thing, but what I would do is... What I usually do is... This is what I usually do, is um, I'll serve the roasted chicken, yeah. and then whatever we don't eat, I either freeze or I just put in the refrigerator, and then the next day I make chicken soup. Okay. And so I would take this carcass and put it, and it's, um, this is one of these things where it's like a strainer. It's a strainer that goes inside the pan. Do you see that? that <laughs> um, and then I would put the chicken in there. And you put the water up right over the chicken. Okay. You know, fill it up over the chicken. With the skin on. With the skin on. Okay. Because all of those seasonings and everything will go in there. Into the water. And then you put the lid on and you just boil it for, you know, a couple, two, three hours. Okay. And at some point, um, and you boil, you know, I mean, I boil it on medium, you know, you know, medium, bring it to a boil and then take it to medium. And the similar. chicken's still fine. And it's chicken's so fine. It's great. Okay. And then eventually what you do is you take this out uh, um, and the chicken carcass is still in there and you kind of set it in the sink uh, and it will, um, you know, you'll tend to that in a little while, but it cools off a little bit okay. when you put it in the sink, okay, or you set it aside. And then while it's still boiling, you add things, and there are certain things that you have to put in, and those things that you have to put in are, I always put in some garlic, um, uh, onions, onions, carrots, uh, like sweet, celery. Sweet onion? You can make what you want. <laughs> you want you Any kind of onion. onion. You can use sweet onions. I usually use like, a, yeah, usually I, I use like brown onions or um, Maui onions or something. Okay. And then mushrooms, and then this is a must. It's uh, fresh chopped cilantro. That's the big thing. Okay. That makes a big, huge difference. And so those are the things I always have to use. Cilantro, garlic, um, mushrooms, celery, carrots, and onions. And then I kind of use up whatever else is in whatever else vegetables I have left. So I had a little bit of a red pepper and a little bit of a uh, green, pepper. green pepper. So I'm, I'm just going to put that in. And then this is kale, chopped kale. I had a few kale. Oh, I like that. So I just put that in because it's really healthy that's for good. you. And so that's good. And sometimes if there's like a leftover <laughs> thing of wine, I'll just put that in there. Do you ever put red thing. wine in there? I never have, but that's not a bad I wonder idea. if you could. Yeah, you could. What is it? Dalton, I never had, I, she always put white wine in there. Oh, yeah. 
But you Why am I supposed to, to go well with chicken? And so then once you chop up all the vegetables and you put them in there, um, you let that boil, and then you go to the carcass and you take off all the pieces of meat uh -huh. and you put the meat back into... Once it's... Yeah. Once it's back, you know, once everything is in there, it's boiling, you put it back in there and it all continues to boil. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then you throw that carcass away. And then eventually, after, you know, uh, the, the vegetables are cooked, you know, so that'll be like 45 minutes or so, um, I always put in either rice or noodles. And she either used, um, you know, she used like these kind of long flat noodles. I don't know what they're like called. Like dumplings? I don't know what they were, but I, I never used those. I oh, used like egg noodles. Egg noodles. Yeah, that's what, that's what I put in my hand. That's what she used. And then, um, and then either that or rice. And so oh, I, okay. I usually use rice. That's awesome. Seriously, wine, does that work? Yes, it's very good. But you don't put a lot of it in there. Not it. a lot. I used to, it's usually like she would put a cup in or something. Yeah. And so you She's usually, like, well, that's my bottle or that. But the way that she did it was kind yeah. of like this where it wasn't measured out. It was all just kind like of feeling. what you have and what you feel like. That's good. And so it's, you and know. And it really better because of that. Yeah. I think. I think you're on to something. Cooking with wine always works. That's right. Always cast. Haha, <laughs> Jimmy says. And so then Gotta add cilantro. Oh, so good. Oh, I should tell you that. Cat's allergic to onions, so that's why she said it's death. Well, People so then, love garlic. So then don't put onions in. You don't have to. It, it's like you use what you put in what you want to put in. Like a lot of people don't like kale. Yeah. They won't put it in. But um, I always think that kale is good. And then this is what it looks like. Can they see this? I don't want to. Do oh, it. they can see. Well, let me go like this. Mm, they might not be able to. I'm even going to do that. Okay. The camera's going off okay, the camera. Okay, great. So that's what it looks like. And it smells amazing. Okay, so now here... It smells awesome. Some for you to have. Yay! Yeah. So we're actually going to try this right now? Yes. I can't believe we're making our time. Our we time, are? That went so quick. Yeah, we have about... Let's say we've been on here for a little bit. Oh, here it is. Oh, actually, we had... Eight more minutes. <laughs> okay, so we'll we talk. have seven more minutes as we're so eating. We'll it. talk. Okay, so. Mmm. Mmm. I think it's very good. Oh, I have to tilt the camera back because you're taller than me. Oh, that's right. You told me to stand behind you so that you, you look so taller. You're at least, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna move up closer. Like that's right. I was instructed, but I forget sometimes <laughs> because it's weird to talk to the back of your head. But I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I always have to do that. Apparently, I get accused of that very often because people are like, you're so much shorter than I thought you'd be. And it's funny, when people will, will come out to see me play, they're very complimentary. Like, oh, I've been listening to you for years, and you're a lot shorter than I thought you'd be. Like, they throw it in at the end, so I'm still all high from the compliment. And then I'm like, huh. Yeah. <laughs> people say strange things. Sometimes. They do. Have you ever? I, I, I get a lot of. Um, when people see you on the street, like, do people ever stop you and go? So, yeah, they do. Do they say anything ridiculous? Sometimes it's really. Usually it's pretty nice, and I, I, I like it. But sometimes people will say something like, um, I did Grimm. Uh, oh, I like recently, that. Guy. Yeah. And I played, like, this, uh, this, this guy that. It was the wolf that, you know, with Little Red Riding Hood. It was yeah. the wolf, so he, he fattens up and then kills. Little girls. Oh, okay. So he's kind of creepy. And, yeah. Um, and so I had a lot of people stop me and say that they didn't like me in that. You know, like they didn't like, like you in that. that no, but they're like, but they don't understand that. They just say, I didn't like you in that. I didn't like you in that show. And so they'll say it like that. And you're and, like, I was acting. And 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 so there's <laughs> that part of me that has to understand, like they're not saying that they thought you did a bad job. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, like, they're, they're just making a point yeah. of saying, like, the writing of it, maybe, or how No, I, I don't know, but, you know, for whatever reason, I think it could also be that they're used to seeing me in a different way. Yeah. But also, I have a neighbor who, all the time, she'll tell me, um, you know, like, I didn't like you in that role. I felt like you pushed, or... Really? Yeah, you know, or she'll say... Is she I mean, I just, No. <laughs> she's counting. That's and, awesome. And I always want to say to her, you should use a number two pencil. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just get it right back to her word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I really like doing? I'm a fan of Shameless. Oh, yeah. And you did an episode of I that show. I did. I did. I thought that was awesome. Thank you. I'm Todd Holland directed that episode. And I had a very good time. 
and um, I was really, I'm, I'm, I was really amazed at how good uh, those kids were there. Oh, uh, Alex, is, Alex is, yeah. Oh, uh, what's her name? Ellie. Huh? Is it Ellie? Ellie. I forget what her name is. I forget um, what her name is. Does anybody know what the name of the actress is? Um. Oh um, wait, I mean, usually she was in Family Opera. Yes, yeah, she was. Yeah, and she did phenomenal. And totally and also, different. And things. also in Day After Tomorrow. Oh yeah. Yes. Emmy. 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 Is that what I said? You said Ellie. Yeah, Emmy. It's Emmy. That's it. But you, but you work with her, so that's that's And I think awesome. that she was so good. And I also um, think that all those kids are just amazing. And of course. Bill Macy is amazing. Oh yeah. So I, awesome. I really, I really had a great time. I it was cool. Him, I had worked with him on Happy Texas, so it was pretty cool. Oh right. There's a few actors that I follow, and I follow your career, and we're friends on Facebook, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. So thank you for for accepting my friend request. Yes. And it's interesting when I see you. I, another friend of mine, Larry Sullivan, is on mm -hmm. a lot of stuff. It's fun when I see you, and I don't expect you to be there, and you show up, and I do like a double take, like Shameless was like that. Because I was, I saw you in a bunch of different things, like Knocked Up, mm -hmm. and then Employee of the Month, like all those different roles that you played. And then I start getting into a show like Shameless, and then you just show up. It's like, uh, this is not. Oh my gosh, look, it's Tim. So I think I have that same experience when I see yeah. people that are, you know, it's the same thing. You know, it's nice to, to see that. Yeah, it's like a surprise guest or something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is really good, by the way. It is. Yeah, I'm actually. Starving and I'm. Oh, Emmy Rosen, somebody said. What? This is. What's Tim's favorite role of all time? Hmm. Thanks, Pat. That is a good question. That is a good question. Oh, you were. Somebody said you were hilarious and bleep my dad said. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's nice. Favorite oh, role? My favorite role? I don't know. It's is, it like a, is it like trying to pick a favorite song? Is it like. Yeah. I like them all for different reasons. That's it. But was anyone just an amazing experience it's that easier. you would go back to? All of them. I mean, a all lot of them. Not all of them. No. I, it's, easier <laughs> not all of them. it's easier to say what I didn't like. Yeah, but we don't have to go into that. <laughs> um, but uh, um, let's just say that I'm embarrassed for my work on VIP. VIP? Remember with Pamela and Pamela. Oh, yeah. The, oh, my gosh. That's funny. Yeah, it was really, I was really bad, but, um, but none of it made any sense at all. I remember, what I remember is I played a, I played a guy, an international terrorist serial killer, and I remember <laughs> that I they had That's me awesome. put these, you know, Pamela and this other girl in this closet, mm -hmm. and and they had tape over their mouths, yeah, and but their hands weren't tied, and so I said to the director, well, why wouldn't they just take off their tape? I'm gonna untie their hands. And, and no, their hands weren't tied. Oh, and so they I said, leave. why would they just take off the tape and leave? And he said, you're thinking too much about it. So then when it actually aired. <laughs> The whole thing, you know, was was bad, but yeah. when it actually aired, um, what I noticed was that, you know, you could see their hands were not, and so I just looked like a stupid yeah. like, serial killer. I looked like somebody that never thought of that. Yeah, but they so, could just be sitting there. Well, I mean, if you're put into a closet and there's tape over your mouth and somebody shuts you in a closet and your hands are free, yeah. what you do is you take it off. And leave the closet. And Have you ever felt like nervous to go up to a director and like question anything? Maybe early on. Is that the on, person that you would go to? Maybe early on. Yeah. If you felt like something didn't make sense, that's the first person mm -hmm. you would hit up. Yeah, and and maybe early on, but even then, that was early on in my thing. Yeah. And even then, I you knew I knew enough because ultimately you're the one that ends up looking foolish. Oh yeah. Um, and the other thing I remember about that is, is um. Pamela Anderson, I thought she was really cool because she said, I said to her something like, that, you know, this show has a sense of, a, you know, sense of humor. There's yeah. A, I like that it doesn't take itself too seriously. And she said, don't tell the producers that. And then, <laughs> and then I noticed that they told her at one point, they said to her, you're being chased by an international terrorist serial killer. And they said, you're running with your hands like this. <laughs> and they said, you have to run like you're running for your life. And yeah. she goes, okay, okay. And then they said, action. And she did the same thing. And I realized she knows exactly what she's, she's doing. Right, yeah. She doesn't want to look like a fool. So I, I, I like her. Pretty I good. she was pretty cool. And I think the media sometimes plays it interesting how they, they paint you one picture and you think, like, I don't know if you like Ferris Hilton. Like, they just paint them in such a way 
that later on I'll hear somebody make a comment like you're saying with Pamela Anderson, that they know exactly what they're doing. And everything seems a little more thought out than it just seems natural. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I was in the Groundlings with Jennifer Coolidge. Do you know who that is? Yes. Jennifer Coolidge was Stifler's mom. Stifler's mom. Yeah, that's right. And she, she's somebody who, she's one of the smart, she's actually one of the smartest people I know. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and people don't really, might not necessarily think that because she plays oh, a lot of characters. Um, but she's kind of who I go to for advice because she's, of all my friends, she's got the best advice on how to deal with Hollywood. That's and, awesome. And Jennifer Lewis. Like, yeah. And I'm like best in show. Yeah, yeah. And the... Uh, and people wouldn't expect that from her because she's kind of like a character. Yeah, so I think that they That's awesome. think that she's blonde and you know. She plays that fancy. part, but she plays it so well. And she was on an episode of Top Chef early on That's when right. it started. I remember that. And that was like my first glimpse of her not being that character. Mm -hmm. And then you really get an insight as to how good of an actress she is, mm -hmm. like how good of an actor you are, and parts where you realize how you are versus what you're capable of mm -hmm. doing. And I think that's, I don't know, I want to be an actor one day, maybe when I'm 80. But I, but I just, I think musicians many times and be actors, and some actors... That and vice versa. And yeah, some actors want to be musicians. But I think it's such a gift to be able to embody something and forget who you are. Because in mm -hmm. my business, it's I'm so tied with my songs and how people see shows like this, like, I'm so tied to who I am that it would be neat and freeing to be somebody else. Yeah. You know, uh, but I, I don't really know how to that. do that. I, I really enjoy that. And, and they asked what my favorite thing was. Yes, I favorite would, thing. I would say probably that so far, my favorite thing has been, I really enjoyed doing that episode of Grimm where I played the killer because... It's it's d very different from me, and I never get cast that way. Yeah. So it was really fun to, um, you know, it's it's fun to play somebody that's real different from you. Yeah. I'm gonna do that. One. But you, you do, do it very well. well. All right, we're we're a little over time, but thank you everybody for showing up. This is the amazing Tim Bagger. Thank, thank you. you so much for being on us. Enjoy your chicken soup. Enjoy your chicken, chicken soup. And remember, it needs schmaltz. Schmaltz is a good thing. Schmaltz. I'm just gonna say some of the things people said. Uh, uh, my cousin is talking to my dad. Great way to see you, for you to see Eric. Yes, I get to see all of you. Thanks, Lois. I'd be an awesome actor, somebody said. You would be. Wow. That's and, and when, you're, you but I, when you're singing and when yeah, you're doing that kind of acting. It, it is kind of this. Well, you get into the song and then, you're right, I forget. It's an emotional I forget where I am. Thing, yeah. But if I'm doing a role, like I did when I was trying to be an actor in high school and doing plays, I was always the one that laughed. Well, I don't because know. I look, do you really? There's sometimes where I like look out at the crowd and then we're acting and we're doing a scene like in high school and I think, this is so ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And they're looking out and this is not real life. And then I crack. So I always thought, oh, I probably wouldn't be a good actor because I would be laughing all the time. No, the, you know, there's a lot of that that goes on. And then the editors fix it. Oh, good. That's how that then works. I just need to do TV. Okay. <laughs> or film. Or not live, though. Not live. All right. Love, oh, somebody said they loved uh, Jennifer Coolidge in Legally Blonde. Yeah, she's great. She was great in that. Thank you for watching for the first time, Horatio. And Nick, thank you so much. Cass, love you. Do you have any advice? Do you have any advice for me? For you? Yeah, I don't know why Cass said that. Just, oh, oh, you're Cass, your friend. You yeah. Know, you told me. Yeah, you told me. Um, advice for you. Uh, I just think you're doing great. I think keep doing what you're doing. And surround yourself with, you know, you you seem like you've got people around you that care about you. Thank and you. Are looking out for you, and I think oh, that's, you're awesome. that's an important part of the whole thing is making sure you've got a good support system. Well, thank you so much. Right. I was really happy to have you on here, and thank you so much. My and, and you can cook and make really good chicken soup. And my dad says, I've always loved your work, Tim. Thank you. Oh, and somebody said that's called breaking character when I laugh. It is calling. It's called breaking character. That is breaking character. Awesome. We're out of time, but it was really fun, and uh, I'll see you guys soon. I'll be actually doing March March 18th will be the next show from Providence Town, Providence Town, Providence Town, Massachusetts. 
where we're updating your kitchen in an eighth hospice for an amazing group, and this will not only be shown on Ustream, but on Provincetown TV. They're filming it through their closed network circuit, so I'm making my Provincetown cooking debut, doing my chicken marsala bites, so tune back in. And, and, and wait, when are you, when's your next show that you're playing? My next show is Tuesday, Valentine's Day, with Andy Moore, 7 p.m. at El Rio in San Francisco. So come out, tell your friends if you're in San Francisco. See you Thursday. Oh, so me, that's Portland. Thanks, John. I'll see you in Portland on Thursday. Thank you for doing Ustream Art. Good to see you, Nick. Thanks, Lois. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. And I'll be back. Have a good one.